Hi, we're going to talk a little bit more about strings. We already discussed that a string could have either double quotes or single quotes around it. So I could create a string, hello, and I could also create another string called hi. And those are both valid ways to designate that there's a string. We also talked about how you could have triple double quotes or triple single quotes. Um, with the string, you can do a few other things. You can even do multiplication, like if you want to repeat a certain string four times. Uh, you can concatenate or add together one string and another string. So hello, hi. Um, one thing that you can't do with strings is change them. So once the string has been created, so we have this string hello, I can look at the different letters inside of the string using an index number. But if I were to actually try to change one of those letters, then it's going to give me an error. So the string object does not support an assignment. And you can't append onto the string um, with like an append. It'll give you the same type of error message. So if you're not allowed to change a string, then how did it work when we were adding the two strings together um, or multiplying a string and showing it more than once? Well, what was actually happening was that a new string was being created. So we can't change any of the strings, but we can use the string's contents and manipulate it and then create a brand new string. Now I took my string and I created a, a little program using strings and a while loop. So this program right here will ask a user to guess whether it's going to be heads or tails for a coin toss. And then we're going to do a comparison between the string heads and the choice that that user made, which we stored in a variable coin. So we'll say test is the coin guess heads. Well, if it's not heads and the coin guess is not tails, then we should go into a while loop saying this is not a valid choice. So we'll only go in here if they didn't say heads and they didn't say tails, if they gave us a garbage answer. And then we'll give them another chance to go ahead and input a guess, heads or tails. So let's see what happens when we run this. So we go ahead and run that program and it says guess, heads or tails. And if I say sideways, it's going to go inside the while loop because that condition, is it not heads? That's true. Is it not tails? That's also true. So we're going to give them another choice. Um, and if I say upside down, that is also not a valid choice. So it'll give me another choice. This time I'm going to pick heads. And then I finally exit out of that while loop. So that was an example of using a while loop and strings. Um, common mistakes I've seen with students with the while loops is forgetting that the while loop has a colon at the end of it. Uh, the first while statement. Um, also, another common mistake is if you were to leave out this statement where you're asking for their input again, then you would have what's called an infinite loop. So there is no way if you get inside of this loop that this condition will ever be false and you'll ever be able to get out of the loop. So if we go ahead and run this, with those changes, it asks us, do we want heads or tails? And if I guess something that's not heads or tails, then I'm stuck in an infinite loop and it's going to go on until I hold down the control key and hit C. And in PyCharm, there's a nice uh, button for you to hit um, to stop an infinite loop. So the most common mistake I see students make is they have no condition in here where that, um, where that while loop can be set to something other than true. So to set it to something other than true, we just have to set the coin to something that doesn't meet this condition. So we could set it by hand, but here we really want to give the user the choice to make a guess again. Do you want heads or tails?